Hello. We're Welcome. back. Yep. Welcome to Grumpy Science. We're back. And congrats out there to Jake and Christy, who are probably too embarrassed to watch our show. That's my son, and he just proposed, and she actually accepted. So, I mean, that's that's Shock. good news for him. He's a good guy, though. Yeah, so. good guy, but he's as ugly as I am. So, <laughs> well, not quite. That's why she said yes. So, anyway, we're going to uh, – <laughs> what we want to talk about, we've been talking about uh, TBI and pulsed electromagnetic field, and we've had – we showed some anecdotal observations and uh, of how PEMF looked like it had a, had a good effect, a positive effect on people with chronic TBI. And then we did a pilot study, not anecdotal, but actually a study, and where uh, we put coils on the head and basically looked like those people all got much better. Uh, and we showed measures, and the measures actually can work to guide treatment. Uh, we think that's sort of the study that we're involved in or the kinds of studies that we want to be involved in. And then the next thing that we want to talk about is, you know, one of the, you know what, one of the problems with repetitive head injuries is, Bob? That they are repetitive. Well, that would be my guess. <laughs> More than one. <laughs> well, you know, like you get eight concussions in high school and then 15 in college. They accumulate. And then if you play in the NFL, you get... Well, that was never a problem. Fall for, down a staircase. For <laughs> you know, lots of lots of repetitive head injuries. You know, you keep getting more and more and more. Well, those people get lots of head injuries. They're finding that they have Alzheimer's-like symptoms yes. in their 40s and 50s. And so people get early dementia. So, dementia. so people who get repetitive head injuries, even if there's not an obvious effect at the time of the injury, it seems to give them these neurodegenerative problems much earlier in life, like later, you know, in their 40s or 50s, even though they may have had uh, head traumas decades before, right? So right. like high school, college, after whatever, and then 10, 20 years down the road, way earlier than normal, you can get. Yeah, you get, you start getting Alzheimer's. Yeah. all kinds of things that look a lot like Alzheimer's. That look a lot like Alzheimer's, right, exactly. So, you know, and there are a lot of aging dementias that look like Alzheimer's, but aren't They're hard Alzheimer's, to tell apart. Really and I think, I think the only conclusive way to tell in the end, right, is like a autopsy, right? It's well, like post-mortem, post but, you know, actually a few years ago, uh, there was an announcement. GE was very excited that they had come up with a way to detect Alzheimer's six months before the people died. It was kind of too late, but... Yeah, you know, well, the horses already thanks, left the barn. Thanks, guys, for that thanks. medical imaging well, insight. That cost, you know, you know that's that already for twenty five thousand dollars. So good luck. Yeah. So actually, what we want to do is do some studies where we look at uh, basically electrode place or uh, coil placement and uh, see if we can uh, basically block the degenerative process. So and, the idea would be a study there, and where we're using some kind of PEMF. Could be our system, but it could also be something else. So the first right? study, first part of the study with our product placement, we show right. the brain gauge. Right. And we use the brain gauge to get different measures. Now, what do you think? Do you think everybody's the same? Of course. If you ask Professor Nodal, he will tell you that all people are exactly the same. <laughs> everybody's I, on the, the other same. hand, I'm not even the same as myself. I have alter egos and all kinds of other issues going on. We won't get into it. So you know, let's let's do some coil placements and say if you yeah. if you put your put your coils in one plate, yes, and then take some measures and say move it somewhere else. Move it somewhere else, maybe. Yeah, take some more measures of the brain gauge, hmm, front and back, and we're talking over the course of what you know, days, few days here, weeks. A few days. Front we're not back. talking about just moving the coils and then yeah, measuring. Yeah. Is now this, we did this is have a process one, that takes. We time. did have one. Brain gauge user recently tell us he wanted to get measures every 20 seconds while he was eating something. And I'm like, mm, well, yeah, not with a real instrument. There's all kinds really, of phony stuff that can do it for you in no time. If you but really like want to know what instrument, really want to know how your brain changes, understand that the fundamental underlying changes that are important to measure, it takes time. And so if you're talking about reversing a long neurodegenerative process or detecting a neurodegenerative process, you need to start doing some. Con some measures so right keeping track over a long period of time now there's all other kind of coil placements that self-hackers try like one of them uh, on selfhack.com they'll stack it on top of the head put it in different locations different people try different things to a certain extent everyone wants to know well what's the right one and the answer is well 
no one really knows what's the right one, but there is a way to find out whether or not there's a, a, a cog, you know, a, a, an effect on the brain, and that is that you can use the brain gauge to actually measure whether or not your your experiments with you know different coil placements are actually doing anything beneficial for your brain function. Right, and you and have so, a number. Yeah, and there's been a lot of studies about self perception of uh, oh, yeah. basically how good you are. And I think we Bob told the story a, a few episodes ago. Uh, about how he had a buddy who was convinced that he was the drunker he more, got, the stronger he got. The more, the more he <laughs> so drank, the stronger he got. ran the experiment with a case of uh, beer and uh, bench press, and the drunker he got, the weaker he got. But right? The but same. He, his perception was he got stronger. And you get these, you get that same problem with any kind of self-reporting too. I think like yeah. dietary stuff. You get a lot of people saying that's why I like oh, I to feel drop fine. food on my shirt, so I have an actual physical record of what I've eaten. Yeah, you know, it's it's. It's science. It's not yeah. just sloppiness, right? Yeah. And so, so basically, and this all plugs into how long do you treat yourself? Do you treat yourself until you feel better, or do you Which treat yourself I mean, until you're completely measurably better? Which and is better. That's right. that's one way to do it uh, because you can't always perceive just how how good you are at something. I mean, yeah, I, and you can't always perceive when you're sick too. I mean, you know, there's a number of these so-called silent killers, high blood pressure. That's a really great example, right? You cannot know if you have high blood pressure unless you measure your, <laughs> your blood pressure, right? It's, it's really that simple. And it doesn't make you feel bad until it's way too late down the road. So, so the idea with the brain gauge is that you can measure very sensitively changes in function um, and, and these can actually be due to, uh, to behavior too. So I'd like to discuss, I actually haven't had a chance to talk to Mark about this, but the brain gauge super user, namely my wife, many of you have talked to her on the phone. If you bought anything from Micropulse, you, you've talked to her on the phone, probably. Um, she started getting really bad scores on her brain gauge, which you've probably seen. Uh, do you know why that is? No, I don't know why. But you were probably wondering. It's not that she's getting lazy at the test. She was telling me about it today. It was the first time I heard about it. It was because she's actually been fulfilling orders and everything till 2 in the morning. And she hasn't been sleeping right. And it shows up on the brain gauge. Wow, right? That's the cool. next day, when she didn't get enough sleep, she's fatigued, she's kind of irritated. It, it actually shows up. So, like, there's, there's, like, you know, behavioral changes. And she thought that it was really important. Um, she wanted me to talk to Mark about it, so I'm actually bringing it up now to say, well, you know, brain gauge can actually tell you a lot of things. It doesn't have to be food or any specific chemical thing or, or anything sophisticated. It's just her measures change after she's had a difficult day or if she's worked too long, hasn't gotten enough sleep. And and these are these are numbers that you can measure that actually tell you how your how your behavior, behavior patterns as they change, they impact cortex function. Right. And so with the, the different scores that you get, we call them systemic versus non-systemic, but in non-geek terms, what that means is some of the measures relate to different parts of the brain, and some of the measures actually relate to how those different parts of the brain are connected and how well everything in the brain is talking to each other. So you have sort of two different ways to look at things, and sleep disorders will actually uh, contribute to uh, poor connectivity. It won't right. change anything structurally right away. So can you guess which measures of hers really went down? I didn't tell you. Oh, which I, ones, I bet if, her if she, plasticity and accuracy scores got really bad, and her reaction time variability got really bad. So her, I her focus so, I, score got pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, maybe maybe you saw those, but I mean, you know, no, you, I can, you can actually kind of tell, I mean, Mark can tell ahead of time, you know, different types of things have different different effects and different brain functions, right? Mm -hmm. And that shows up on the shows up right. on the brain. So then if you're doing some self experiments to say, oh, I wonder if this supplement works or if that that thing works, you know, what and if you've got a changing? supplement that says it really helps your brain and it, we talked yeah. about this nootropics <laughs> and stuff like this, it really helps your brain function, really does all these things. And you take it and you see absolutely nothing. Or, you know? or you're doing something and you see absolutely nothing after twenty seconds. You need to wait a little longer. Yeah, a little bit longer. Take, so you know, I wouldn't discard and, it. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. discard it like the very first time you try it. But if something's supposed to really help your brain function over a period of you know days or weeks or months, and if you measure over days and weeks and months and you don't see that improvement, that's a piece of information yeah. you probably want to know. So I, I I guess that a dietary change would be take at least three days and probably three weeks to, to actually have an effect. Although we can see effects. How quickly do effects things like um, 
you'll see like with uh, alcohol really fast. Well, of alcohol is pretty fast. And 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 also for <laughs> for a lot of abuse of alcohol, you get lingering effects too, yeah. right? And then uh, and then of course there's the uh, um, coffee. I imagine shows up. Sorry, talking about alcohol made me thirsty. <laughs> I'm a bad influence. <laughs> I've destroyed this man. So so anyway, yeah, you know, the, some things you know that are like overt stimulus stimulants are going to show up really soon but then other things that are supposed to give you like long lasting benefits in, in brain function you know like omega-3s or something like that maybe might if they do work well, i don't know take a much longer time for you to actually see a change right yeah okay well we'll uh probably leave it at that we're going to reward you with a short shorter than normal <laughs> video right. you've been very good so we're going to stop talking All don't right. forget there's a discount code hidden somewhere we don't post it but if you look very closely you can find it in our video all right we'll see you later